Okay. Twenty-two lecture number twenty-two. Gotta talk about wedge product. So, before we know tensor product between two tensors, but but the tensor product, the result one, almost never alternates. So we want some alternating tensor product, and it is called wedge product, and it's stated in this one, twenty-eight point one. So we let v be a vector space. So. We said there's an operation that assigns each two alternating tensors with order k and an l to an element of order k plus l, and it has lot. It has six properties. So this binary operation between functions is associative, homogeneity, and has distributivity and anti-commutativity. So this anti-commutativity, and this is five. We're gonna look at it soon. And number six, it says that under pullback, right? It is linear under pullback. Some sense like that, right? This linear under pullback. Okay, and this is called the wedge product of f and g. All right, so. And here's a note, right? The four implies that for alternating tensor of odd order, then itself is zero, right? Because it is something odd. So itself is equal to negative of itself. So it must be zero. It's a zero mapping. It's not a zero real number. Cause like from now on, our like before we're dealing with operation between numbers, right? But now we're doing operation between functions. <laughs> So the zero represents the zero mapping. Okay. So here's twenty eight point one. And before that, let us just define what is the wedge product. Okay. So for step one, we did define for any k tensor. We define a to be this. I think there's a typo. It should be v, right? Then you're just another you're closed right you're a, you're a vector space or closed under addition so okay so we just define a function that a of f is equal to this so the sigma extends over all elements of the symmetric group of order k so we have this is true right by our last lecture we have this is true right like the definition of the elementary k alternating tensor and we have three properties so a is linear a f is alternating tensor so it, the codomain is the uh, tensor space but the actual range is this right uh, a f is alternating and if f itself already alternates then a f is alternating and it is equal to f times k factorial so we're gonna check them. So first, we know that this to this is linear. So A of course is linear. And the second one, we have this, we compute. So if it's alternating, we wanna show this is equal to sine of tau times AF, right? So we just do this. We just put it up because, right? And then by the property, we have this. And then by the similar operation, like the similar reasoning as we did in last lecture, is equal to this, and then it becomes this because this extends over all, right, all uh, permutations. And the third property is that if f alternates, then a f is equal to this. Well, if f alternates, then we have this already. Then a f is equal to this. So how many elements are there in symmetric group? There are k factorial elements. So let us verify them. Okay, so now we have to find a like an alternating mapping and maps every tensor to an alternating k tensor. All right, so step two, we're gonna define our wedge product. So for f and g, their k l tensors, we define their wedge product to be equal to one over k factorial of the n times a of the wet the, the the tensor product of f and g applied a to them now this is alternating by step one right because this is alternating then you 
times the scalar no matter what is still alternating so this is an alternating tensor now there's some confusion about the appearance of 1 over k factorial times l factorial and here is a, a little justification marked by blue so let's just, just first calculate the wedge product and we write it out it's going to look like this so for a single term in a summation so for any single term here for any single term in a summation it's going to be look like this and now we know that some other terms can be obtained by permuting them and then permuting them right so some of other terms can be obtained by this right because this sigma varies right so some of other terms can be obtained by you switch this and you switch this so you switch two of them so some of them not all of them okay by permuting themselves and themselves and the sign of the permutation also might change but f and g are alternating so for any permutation the sign brings like you bring bring a front right so if you permutate this the sign brings front and permutate this the sign also brings in front Right, and because f and g are alternating, so suppose you're given a fixed one, and then you want a new permutation. So if you compose a tau, right? If you compose a tau, then it's like basically f tau of g tau of them. And because you can bring the sign of tau down because they're alternating, so eventually, this bring in front, right? They're, you're just multiplying by one. So all of them are the same value. Right? All such terms have the same value because you bring down tau twice and so one or negative one, their square is always one. And how many of such values can be like obtained? There are k factorial times l factorial, which is the number the cardinality of S K and the cardinality of S L, right? So you multiply them together, they're just a counting, right? So we just divide this to avoid the effect of redundancy. So here's like a little explanation of why we divide this. Okay. Now step three, we check homogeneity. We check this one first. So we're gonna check two, three, four, and then we think we're gonna check one and then five. Okay? So we check two first. So CF with G is like this by definition. And we have a property of tensor product, which you pull the G out. And the A is linear, we can pull C out, right? And this is basically C times this. And the other part is similar, right? The other part, the other part right? We have to this. And this one, you just do the similar thing, okay? And uh, now for for the distributed distributed property, we have f plus g multiplied by h, which is we write it by definition, and then because the tensor product is distributed, we can put it in, and then because a is linear, we can pull it out, right? And then we're done. Okay, so two three done. We're gonna verify. So this one just similarly, and for anti commutativity. We, it states that for fg have order k and l, then gf, so we commute them, but we have to multiply by negative 1 to the power of k times l. Okay, so we'll verify 4. We first show something more general. So if f and g are k l tensors, then a of this is equal to negative 1 k l a g f. Then with this result, we can say that so gf is this by definition and then we use this we switch them right we switch in f and f and g and this and this this is just this and right so we're done okay so we just prove this we want to prove this equation so we consider a special permutation pi such that its value is equal to so is equal to this okay and we count the inversions, they are k times l inversions. And then we know that this is equal to this. Why? Here is the justification. Okay. 
it's really simple. Then we know that A applied this. We write it out by definition and then we we switch so we substitute this and then we do the same same reasoning, right? We can like the tau pi this becomes a uh, sigma of pi, right? And then we can bring the pi in front and this and this also. This also extends over all permutations, so we can just say it's sine pi times a g of f, right? And then the sine of pi, right? It's like one kl. So we're done. Okay, so we're done this. And now, step four, let's go to step five. Step five, we're trying to verify the associativity. So first, we're going to show something some elementary results so let f and g be order k and now such that a f is zero mapping then a with all other uh, tensor product still maps to zero okay so we're going to show this first so consider one term in the summation we consider one term in the summation of this it's going to be look like this right and then we group all terms such that the last term is the same so we we keep this and then we grouped it, and is it going to be equal to this? Now here we used this property, okay? So let us, let us think about how this has been constructed. So we have G, right? And then we have some, so we permute, we permute them, we permute them. But eventually it is like, it's a, it's a K plus L permutation, but with them being fixed and them are permutating so it's basically a a a tau of pi right it's a tau of pi and the sine of tau of pi if sine tau times sine pi i'm sorry sigma sine tau times sine sigma right then you can put it in, right? We can put it in. And those are fixed because the fixes from K plus one to K plus L. And those are like, we just grouped it. So this is like a, like a partial sum of this. It's like a partial sum. Okay, so for this partial sum, what is this? We observe this. This sum is just this, right? It's just A of F of V of sigma one to sigma k right well we know that af is equal to zero right so the entire thing is zero and for other forms of this we have the same reasoning right then it's just zero everything is zero okay okay so with this we move on we're also going to prove something another result so if f is a tensor h is a it belongs to this, this set, then AF multiplied by H is equal to this. So for arbitrary tensor, no matter what your order is, but AF and H is equal to equal to this. So we just suppose that F is a K tensor and we want to show that, what we want to show is that this is equal to this, right? We want to show this is equal to this. But because this is equal to this, right? And we want to show this is equal to this, then equivalently we can write it rewrite it as this because a is linear okay because a is linear a is linear we can get this it's equivalent to this equation and this equation because the this product the tensor product is distributed right we can get this and by step five if we show this is zero so a of this thing is zero. Then by step five, right? If a of so a a of f is zero, then a of f with any g is zero. So if we can show that a with this thing is zero by step five, we just proved it. But why well, show this? But a f is alternating, right? So a of a of f is gonna be k factorial of a of f. And a is linear you can bring it in right so they're the same 
get this linear, then we're done. Okay, so we have these two results of this equation. So we, we have this equation. So, and then we have another another result. So we're going to show this. So if f and g h are order k l m, we show this is true. We show this is true. So, so the f and g becomes this and the h. So we have the associativity inside, so we can change them, right, while we're proving the general associativity. Let f be this. So we just let f be this for its convenience, then f and g is equal to klaf, right? So this is just this. Well, this becomes this by step 6. We use step 6, right? A of f. Right? We multiply 1 over this. And this f, we put it inside and we're done. Okay, so now we're finally going to verify the distributivity. So we have KLM FGH is equal to A times FGH by step 7. We just, we just proved this, right? So we basically, we cancel out, we cancel out this one. Okay? And yeah, we use the associativity, and then we by step four. Remember step four? Here it is, right? We showed this is true. So F here are K L tensors. Now G H is L plus M tensor. F is a K tensor, so K times L plus M, right? And then we can switch the thing inside. We switch this to this, this to this, right? We switch them. Okay, by step four. And then by step seven again, recognize this. This is just L, M, K, G, H, and F, right? And then for this one, we use anti commutativity, right? We switch them. We switch them with. I think it's this one, right? Uh, wait a minute. So we have, we switch this, we have is equal to this. And we bring this in front first, we bring this in front first, and we use anti commutativity, right? Anti commutativity, which is negative one times another stuff, which is this order and this order, and we can switch them, right? Okay? And now, those are the same. So this is just one. It is equal to one. So this times this. Now, we can cancel out them. So they are the same. So we verified the associativity. And now we verify property number five. So what is property number five saying? So we have a basis, dual base, and we let psi be you know like the elementary alternating tensors. So we have a ascending k tuple. Okay, then. Psi i is equal to the dual base i1 corresponding to the um, to your uh, index. So we have this equation. We have this equation. Okay? So we refine this. So we're going to show some other result. If we show this, so for any k of the 1 tensors, for any k 1 tensors, we have, if we show this equation, Okay, so inside is wedge product, and you apply A, it becomes, oh no, sorry, inside is tensor product, and we apply A, all the wedge product becomes, ten, sorry, all the tensor product become wedge product. So, um, then if we show this, then this is equal to this, right, we, we, we talked about this, and this, phi i, is equal to this we talked about this too and we have this it becomes this so we have this equal to this okay so we want to show this is true when k we use by we use induction so when k is one this is just trivial so suppose we have true if for k minus one then f is equal to this then this is the k k case right when n equal to k then we have this equal to this mm -hmm. 
Now, this is by, I think it's step, step six, right? Step six, because H, the H we, is, is a one tenth, so it's like divide by one, right? So we just divide by one. And this AF, by inductive hypothesis, is equal to this, and by induction, we're done. All right? And then finally, we're gonna verify property number six. So it's like kind of linear under pullback. So if there's a linear transformation and FG are alternating with W, then we have this equation. So, dun, dun, F tensor. First, we have this is true by the proof 27.6. Okay, we have this is true. And this is really simple. And also T star is linear, so we can bring the T star inside, okay? So we have this. We use this to show this, okay? We have this. Now, let F, G, B, K, and L tensors on W, then we just calculate them. So this, by definition, is equal to this. And now we can bring the T star in. We can bring T star in, right? And this is by theorem 26.5. We have the property of tensor product. We have this. And now we have this, right? By the definition of wedge product. So we have verified one, two, three, four, five, six. We verified all of them. And now here's a note. So note, we're gonna show how we calculate the wedge product. We define them, but how do we calculate them? So we're given the phi and the size and FG alternating, so they can express uniquely as a linear combination of alternating elementary K tensors or L tensors, right? So this is a ascending K double and J is an ascending L double. Now, their wedge product is basically equal to this sum, right? You take this and take this because we have we, we, we have verified the the distributive property and the associative property, right? And it's gonna come to this. You just treat it as like normal like normal sums and numbers, right? It, it can be treated like that. So we know the value, we need to know the value of them. We just need to know the value of them. But by five. Remember? Okay, right, we can break each of them down into more elementary pieces. So we can break them down like this. Okay, so for I1, IK, J1, JL. And we know that each of them is negative. It's the, ne it's the negation of, if you switch them, it, it's just negatives. Because we have anti-commutativity. And with that, we know that if they're the same, it's 0 to 0. By anti-commutativity. So this is zero if there's duplicate so if there's like duplicates and this product is equal to zero <laughs> else is equal to some sine of pi multiplied by side k so k side k is a k plus l elementary alternating tensor <laughs> k plus l and so what is the pi so pi arranges this tuple into an setting order because all the terms are distinct, right? So we just, we can arrange them into a ascending order, right? And it turns out we just multiply the sine of pi because cause each, each permutation is like a, it's like a elementary, elementary permutation, right? Elementary permutation, for each elementary permutation, we're switching them right so we're, so we just switch them we have a negative and we remember if a permutation is a m composite of elementary ones then the sign is just negative one to the m right so if we have to switch if we have to switch this into an ascending order by switch two adjacent ones by m times then pi is the permutation and the sign of pi is just negative one to the m so they're the same. And this concludes our section for multilinear algebra. We finished.
multi-linear algebra for this course. Of course, there's more materials on this subject, but this is all we need to derive to kind of develop our theory. And for the next few lectures, we're going to talk about differential operators and tensor field and vector fields. It's going to be a lot more complicated than this. So this is like a preparation for our future topics. All right.